Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be using the second method because I forgot to include that in the first recording. Anyways, we have a squared minus b squared equals 12. And if you remember, with the first method we used it, we used an identity to solve the problem. But suppose you don't know that identity, which is very unlikely. Well, let's pretend you do not know what difference of two squares means. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and replace a and by the way, a and b are integers, and we're solving for a and b, we're going to replace a with something like b plus k. And you can also apply this to higher powers, such as a cubed minus b cubed, a to the fifth minus b to the fifth, so on and so forth. Now, I'm not necessarily saying a is greater than b, because k can also be negative. k is an integer. So let's go and replace a with b plus k. We're going to get b plus k squared minus b squared equals 12. So for those of you who are not familiar with the difference of two squares, it's just going to give you a different identity. And here we're going to get b squared plus 2bk plus k squared minus b squared equals 12. And then we can go ahead and cancel out the b squared and we end up with k times 2b or not 2b. Yeah, I was able to make that joke plus k equals 12. Obviously, that's the graph of a squared minus b squared equals 12. We talked about it in the previous video. But anyways, so now we have this expression factored. Now, you can go ahead and stick to this, like k times 2b plus k equals 12. But one of the things you need to be careful about is when you factor 12, let's say you go with 1 and 12, right? So since k is 1, this is going to be an odd number, but 2b is always even and 12 is even. So in this case, if this is the second factor is even, this also needs to be an even number. So it can pretty much tell which cases are going to work and which cases are not going to work. For example, 2 and 6 is a workable case because k is 2 and it's even. Make sense? So from here, what do we get? For k equals 2 and 2b plus k equals 6, since k is equal to 2, we can go ahead and replace it with that. And that gives us 2b equals 4 and b equals 2. But wait a minute, where does k come from, right? Well, we just assume that A can be written as B plus K. A is B plus K, and K and B are both 2, so A is going to be 4 in this case. This basically gives us the ordered pair 2, comma 4. And similarly, you can get the 2, comma negative 4, and then so on and so forth, right? Obviously, it's the other way around because A is 4. So we can basically get 4, comma 2 from here and 4, comma negative 2 as well. And then we can kind of go with the negative 4, uh, comma, you know, plus minus two in the same manner. I hope this makes sense. Again, this is for people who are not familiar with the difference of two squares formula, but there's still a way to factor it. Also, let me tell you, from this factor, we can kind of go into difference of two squares, because if you think about it, we said that, hey, we want a to be b plus k, right? So look at this very carefully. This expression actually is going to give you difference of two squares. If you look at it very carefully, first of all, from this assumption, it means that a minus b is equal to k. So I can replace this with a minus b. Great. What about 2b plus k? 2b plus k can be written as b plus b plus k. But b plus k is the same as a. So we can kind of replace it with a and that gives us b plus a or a plus b. In other words, by using the substitution, we got the same factor that we got with the first method, which is the other video, by the way. Go ahead and check it out. I'll include a link down below and you'll get the exact same values from there. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and... Bye-bye.